Hey, this is Dino, and today I want to talk to you about using service account keys to authenticate when invoking administrative APIs for Apigee X. Oh, that's a mouthful. What is Apigee X? Apigee X is a new architecture for the Apigee SaaS offering in which Google will manage the runtime plane and provision a VPC uh, that's peered with your VPC to allow more efficient control of network ingress and network egress into your managed APIs. Some of the highlights for Apigee X, some of the highlights of changes and new things compared to our previous uh, Apigee SaaS architecture, um, it depends on Google identity and identity and access management. So that means you authenticate with your Google ID. Uh, there's a bunch of other features and also you get the G Cloud command line tool support. Now, I wanna talk about those two things in particular today uh, and we'll see how the identity and access management uh, affects the administrative, uh, the access to the administrative APIs. So the administrative user interface is now homed at apogee.google.com. Uh, it looks basically the same as what you're used to seeing uh, for the administrative user interface that you find at apogee.com. Um, a lot of similar uh, capabilities. Lot, um, basically, you'll find yourself very much at home here. However, you do authenticate as your Google identity, um, as a Google account. You're no longer logging in with an Apigee account. And if you have single sign-on, you can use your corporate uh, SAML identity provider to sign in to uh, Google. So once you've got that set up, you'll be able to get access to the uh, administrative user interface. But for automating, you kind of want to use um, the administrative API, which is documented. Uh, here you can find this in um, on cloud.google.com. There's a full documentation of the REST resources for Apigee, things like uh, API products, creating, deleting, updating um, APIs, deploying uh, APIs, anything you'd want to do in, in a CI-CD environment, these things are, are documented. The um, security for this is OAuth. So you need a token, but how do you get that token? Well, uh, you're going to be using Google APIs and it's an OAuth model. So we can search for that and there are clear instructions for how to, how to authenticate. Um, Google does talk about the use of service accounts. That's probably what you're going to want to use when you have that CICD pipeline. Uh, and the way it works is here, um, the application that's going to be invoking the administrative API needs to create and sign a JWT. So it's a self-signed JWT. Use that JWT to request uh, an access token from the, from the Google, Google token dispensary, get that token back, and then use tokens to call the Google API. So um, the first couple steps, creating and signing the JWT and getting an access token, you only have to do that once, and then you can invoke uh, different Google APIs repeatedly with that. What kind of APIs? Things like getting uh, the list of API proxies deployed in Apigee, um, deploying a new one, importing a proxy, and so on. Um, so all of those are defined as APIs. How are we going to get the um, signed JWT? Well, um, the, the way this works is um, you can use a service account. So let's flip over to cloud. Uh, sorry, console.cloud.google.com. Uh, and in there, we can create a service account under uh, APIs and services and credentials. So for your project, you'll want to create uh, a new uh, service account. You can do that by clicking credentials, collect, click uh, service account, and we'll call the CI CD3. Um, and Google will suggest a, a unique name for that. Um, we're just going to use this for demonstration of uh, CI CD um, service account. So I'll create that. Now I'm just creating the account. Um, I want to grant to that account some capability in Apigee. And there are a number of different roles that are built into the Google Cloud Platform for allowing access by this service account into Apigee resources. 
Uh, organization admin, you know probably what that is. If you're familiar with Apogee, you can get uh, roles for analytics editor, analytics viewer, uh, API reader, developer admin, and so on. You can read all about these. Um, but what we want to do is just basically automating the administrative API. So I'm going to select this rather powerful role for this service account. Then I'm going to continue, and I don't need to add uh, any user access for that. So now I've got this new service account. It is here. Uh, and it has no uh, keys available. What I want is a um, service account key. So let's create a new key, and I'll uh, affirm that it's the JSON key. What that's doing is now downloading a JSON file onto my computer. Uh, into my downloads folder and that thing has a private key that we're going to be able to use to sign the JWT that we use to get the token. Now there's two different ways to do this. One is with the gcloud command line tool. gcloud is another one of the highlights um, in Apigee X, a uh, new thing that you can use with Apigee. Um, and basically it's a command line tool that lets you uh, interact with Google Cloud uh, products and capabilities, including Apigee. We can uh, go through here. There's an easy way to install it. You probably want, want to do that. Um, once you get it installed, uh, you can look through the documentation and understand um, how to set it up and so on. The thing I want to draw your attention to is um, uh, authorizing with a service account. So um, this command, gcloud auth activate service account, is what we want to do. And we want to pass in the key file that we just downloaded. So what does this look like on the command line? Let's have a look. Um, so first thing I want to do is look at gcloud, make sure I have that running. Uh, and it's going to tell me, yep, here's all the commands. Uh, it's available. gcloud uh, components update is a good thing to run periodically. Just to make sure that you've got the latest G Cloud. If you don't, it'll prompt you and update uh, accordingly. What we want to do is run that command that we saw, G Cloud auth activate service account. And um, we're going to want to specify the key file, dash dash key dash file. And uh, that key file that I just downloaded Uh, that's the one. So what this is now doing is uh, setting up gcloud to use that identity, um, the identity that's asserted in that JSON file. And we can now look at that and say uh, what identities are available. Uh, I have two. One is my personal identity and all the roles. Uh, I, you know, if I interact with gcloud using that identity, I'd get all the roles and permissions uh, given to me personally. Um, the one I'm using is this, it's the service account. And that is a, a unique uh, email um, account ID that is um, associated to that service account. And it is marked active, as you can see. Um, so uh, now I've actually authenticated as, as that. Uh, what else I, I can do is um, print the access token. So I said that, um, that Apigee APIs are accessible via an OAuth model. They do require a token. Uh, this is the token associated with that, uh, a current token associated with that identity. So if I just grab this and say um, uh, token equals that, I should now be able to uh, uh, curl and against the Apigee um, let me let me um, clear that against the Apigee endpoint, administrative API endpoint. That's apigee.googleapis.com to examine uh, the let's say the Hello World API uh, revision one of that, and you can see I'm getting uh, JSON back from that. Uh, so what do we do? We created a service account. We downloaded the service account um, key file that's in JSON format. We use that to authenticate using gcloud uh, and then obtained the access token. And then using that access token, we could invoke a curl command against the endpoint. If 
um, if we did not provide that access token, let's suppose we provided something bogus, uh, what's going to happen is we'll get a 401 and the Google uh, API's endpoint will tell us, hey, you're not authorized. Uh, we're going to need an access token and it needs to have the right uh, permission and scope. Okay, so that's how you can get there with uh, G Cloud. But what's really happening, uh, we, we have uh, other options. Um, what's really happening is signing that JWT and sending it in. So um, how could we do that manually? Here's, a, here's an option where you could uh, show you how to sign your own JWT um, that can be used with Google APIs. And you can see here, this is just Node.js, nothing really fancy. It's using this Node Jose uh, module that allows you to um, uh, sign uh, JWTs uh, yourself, uh, really simple model. So what I've done is I've created the payload. It looks like this. And um, where, am I, where am I getting this information? I'm getting it from that key file. So that key file is from downloads. It's this key file. That's what it looks like. And right now I'm showing you a, a secret. This is a credential uh, with a private key. And so this is risky. I'm going to deactivate this key before I release this video, but th this is normally something you would not want to do. This will give anyone access to my, um, to my uh, project, my project infinite chain here. So um, this is the contents of the JSON file, and this is the thing that G Cloud reads uh, in order to authenticate. We can also do this manually, and that's what I'm showing you with this um, with this sign uh, Node.js script. So it's what it's doing is reading the key file, uh, and then producing a JWT, uh, signing it, and printing that thing out. So what does that look like? Uh, let's try what this looks like. Um, and the, and the key file that we want is uh, this one. So let's flip back over here. We'll specify that key file. And really fast, it's just producing that uh, JWT. That's the one we want. Uh, and this is just for diagnostic purposes. That's what the header looks like uh, before it's encoded. That's what the payload looks like before it's encoded. Uh, and this is now signed. One of the things that Google requires is the the expiry must be no more than 300 seconds after the issue at time. So um, I've set that Node.js script up to uh, automatically use a, a very fast expiry. Then what we, use, what we can do is uh, use the, the curl command and send in uh, a form request with uh, a grant type of this string. This is documented by Google. Uh, and then the assertion uh, with that JWT. So let me get the JWT. Uh, we'll paste that in. And then we'll get the, the curl command to uh, obtain a token. We send it into uh, oauth2.googleapis.com slash token. Um, and there you see it. We are getting a JSON response back. And there is a new... Uh, access token. So that's the, the exact same process that G Cloud uh, Auth Print Access Token does. Um, it's just um, we can do that with just curl. So now, uh, just to sort of prove it to you, I can set that token into a shell variable, and we'll run the the curl command again uh, to get the Hello World um, uh, API proxy. And you'll see we do have um, we do have authorization for that. You can see I'm getting the same payload using that different token. Okay, so what did we see? We saw that with Apigee X, uh, you can now use your Google Identity and Google Identity and Access Management to interact with uh, Apigee. That is both through the user interface and through the administrative uh, API. Um, either with G Cloud or curl. Um, I'm going to post the uh, script that I used and some other resources on uh, GitHub Gist. Look for that in the notes in this YouTube video. I hope this is helpful. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and any comments or questions, just post them on this YouTube video. 
Take care.